Hi folks, uh, today I'm going to be talking about leaders and knots uh, that are suitable for fishing for Pacific salmon and sea run cutthroat trout. Now this video is intended for people who've maybe been fly fishing before but want to try fly fishing in the salt or for complete beginners that you know, just want to try out the fishery for the first time. Now magazines and books and the people that um, own fly shops are going to tell you that what you need between your fly line and your fly uh, is a tapered nylon leader. And for the uninitiated, uh, this is a tapered nylon leader. And they come in different sizes. This one is 1X. That's a pretty thick one. If you have a 7X, the numbers go in reverse. That would be kind of gossamer thin. If you look at a tapered leader, it's got a thick end, the butt section, which has a loop on it which you attach you know, to your fly line, and then it, it tapers gradually to a very fine tip where you attach the fly. And the whole point of uh, tapered leaders is that they transfer the energy very smoothly from your cast all the way down to the fly. And as the leader tapers out and thins, some of that energy gets dissipated, and the result is that the line unrolls gently and delivers your fly very very gracefully onto the water. And that's really important if you're fishing um, in a little stream for a trout with a dry fly where you, you don't want to spook the fish. Now, I use tapered nylon leaders quite a lot when I'm fishing topwater flies myself in the salt, things like beach poppers. Uh, and, and they allow me to you know, deliver the fly gently, particularly in calm conditions. But I'm here to tell you that uh, you don't need tapered leaders if you're fishing subsurface flies, uh, which is going to be the majority of the fishing. So we're talking about streamers, we're talking about bait fish imitations, clouds and minnows. You really don't need a tapered leader. And in fact, you're better off if you don't use a tapered leader. Now, part of the reason I don't use them very much is simply economics. Uh, the big manufacturers, we're talking about Rio, or scientific anglers, or Orvis, their leaders are going to cost you anything between $4.50 and $6 a pop. And sooner or later, <laughs> and sooner if you're a, a beginner, uh, you're going to get those leaders um, abraded on barnacle-covered rocks, or you're going to get wind knots in them, and it's going to render them useless. And that can get pretty spendy in a hurry. Now, uh, everyone likes a bargain and looking for a cut price alternative, uh, including me. Um, so I, I uh, tried some of these uh, really inexpensive leaders from, uh, I found these on Amazon.com. I'm not going to show the name. Uh, but with everything, you know, you get what you pay for. And, and these ones, uh, some of them were fine, if a little bit stretchy. Other ones whole packet I had with uh, like visible clench marks a couple of inches from the tip uh, and some of them just had the tensile strength of wet spaghetti. I would tie them on and then just you know pull to make sure my knot was secure on the fly and the thing just just snapped. So for me it's uh, adios cheapo leaders. Not gonna have those. Now the other reason that I don't use tapered nylon leaders all the time, is that fluorocarbon in almost every way is a far, far better material for the job. First of all, fluorocarbon sinks quicker than nylon, so it gets your subsurface fly down where it has to be. Uh, secondly, its refractive index is, uh, is much closer to water than nylons, so to the fish it's, it's pretty much invisible. Thirdly, it's very hard, much harder than nylon, which means it's ab abrasion resistant. And that's important if, you know, you're trying to beach a big salmon on some rocky beach. Fourthly, it's got a much higher tensile strength than nylon, meaning that you can make a fluorocarbon leader thinner than a nylon one of the same breaking strain. So a potential disadvantage of fluorocarbon is uh, it derives from that hardness I was talking about. Fluorocarbon doesn't like to be bent back on itself or kinked, 
and so it doesn't necessarily seat very well into knots. Um, you can mitigate that by making sure that you moisten your knots before you snug them down. Just wait for this boat to go past. And you can consider retying your flies uh, after you've caught a couple of big fish. So um, you say, well, surely you can buy tapered fluorocarbon leaders. Well, you can. Uh, I've, I've got one here. I'll just show it to that camera. Um, this one cost me $14. Uh, $14 for a single leader. I say, adios, not going to use that. So uh, let's talk about the actual leaders I like to make. Um, here's one. Uh, it's got, it's got uh, a heavy butt end with a loop in it, just like a tapered leader would. Uh, and then it's knotted. This is six feet, six feet of heavy fluorocarbon. And then there's a knot and it goes to um, three feet of lighter fluorocarbon that you can tie your fly to. So when I'm making these for the butt sections, I use inshore cigar, um, which is less expensive than the, uh, than the stuff that they sell for making leaders. You don't, you don't need that fine diameter in the butt section. And then for the tip sections, I use the blue label cigar fluorocarbon. And uh, that is, uh, it's finer and it's more flexible. Uh, really good stuff. I make three different sizes of leader. I use a 25 pound butt and a 15 pound tip and that one uh, is equivalent to basically a size 0x and that works for big migratory coho. Uh, I'm sure you could use it for chum salmon and anytime I'm casting a big heavy fly that's what I'm going to use. The second one I use has a 20 pound butt and a 12 pound tip. And I use that one for pink salmon and resident coho. It'll still turn over a pretty big fly. And lastly, I go with uh, a leader that I make specifically for sea run cutthroat. And that one has a 15 pound butt and an eight pound tip. Now, if you've got the appropriate rod, an eight pound breaking strain leader is gonna quickly enable you to land pretty much any sea run cutthroat trout, and that's important. We certainly don't want to play these fish to exhaustion. So having said all that, uh, let's go and I'll show you precisely how I put these leaders together. And I'll show you some knots that I think you'll find extremely useful. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm using this heavy monofilament line. We need to tie a loop in the butt end. It's called a perfection loop, and you'll need about six inches of your leader material. So first you create a loop. Notice that the tag end goes at the back of the loop. Then you create a second loop taking the tag end behind the first. While pinching those two loops together take the tag end right between them and pinch everything together. Now take something like a pen or a pencil and poke it through that first loop, catch the second loop and pull it through the first. Now pull hard to close the knot and I would lubricate the knot before doing this just haven't shown it here. If the knot's been tied correctly the tag end should protrude at 90 degrees from the standing line. You can cut that away leaving just a short tag for insurance. Now I'll tie the same knot using 25 pound fluorocarbon. Here's loop one. Now I make a second loop, put the tag end between them, pull loop 2 through loop 1, lubricate and pull tight. Snip off the excess and that's your perfection loop. Now cut your butt section six and a half feet from the loop you just made. Again, I'm representing that using this thick red nylon. Now take a three and a half foot length of the fluorocarbon tip material represented here in green. Up 
overlap the two of them by about 8 inches. Now create an overhand loop. Reach in and pull the tip material and the end of the butt material through the loop, just as if you're tying a simple overhand knot. Repeat that process two more times. At this point, lubricate the knot well. Hold on to all four ends and pull tight. Now you can cut away the two short tags. And what you just made is the triple surgeon's knot. It's an excellent way to join two lines together. For the knot to work well, the two sides should be of reasonably similar diameter, so no more than a 10 pound difference in breaking strain. This is also the knot you should use if you're adding tippet material to the end of a tapered leader. Now I'll show you this knot tied in fluorocarbon. I've got my 25 pound butt section in my right hand and my 15 pound tip section in my left. So I overlap them about 8 inches and I'll loop them both together. I'm pulling the tip section and the end of the butt section through the loop three times. I'm lubricating the knot. Then I'll hold all four strands and pull them tight to create the knot. Now I can cut away the two short tags to complete. Attaching the completed leader to the end of the fly line is easy. Most fly lines come with a welded loop like this at both ends. All I need to do is pass the loop of my leader over the fly line, then locate the tip of the leader and pass that through the welded loop. I've now made a loop to loop connection. Now each time I retie a fly, the end of my lead is going to get shorter and shorter. Eventually I might want to replace the entire tip section by cutting off and retying the triple surgeon's knot. Let's say the leader becomes frayed or damaged in some way, and it's an easy matter then to simply replace it with an entirely new leader just by reversing that loop-to-loop -loop connection. Now I want to talk about tying your fly to the leader. Many people use the clinch knot. This is the knot you've probably been tying since you were a kid. You used it for attaching a swivel or tying on a lure or a sinker. It's a very strong knot, but the problem with it and all similar knots is that it makes a rigid connection to the fly. The movement of the fly is then largely directed by the leader and it's not really free to move in response to the dressing or interact with the current. If you use this type of knot, you're potentially throwing away a lot of the action of your fly. Instead, I prefer to tie the non-slip loop. As you can see, the fly is able to move completely independently of the leader. So it can wiggle about in the water, twist in the current. And I really feel that this is absolutely the most articulate way you can present that fly. So here's how to tie that knot. First of all, you need to take about six inches of your leader. Then you're going to tie an overhand knot. Pull it tight, but not completely closed. Take the tag end and put it first through the hook eye. Then it comes back through the hole in the overhand knot and the tag end has to go back in from the same side it came out. This would be the wrong way, so same side. Now manipulate the leader 
until you get the loop size that you want. I make mine about three or four times the diameter of the hook eye. Kind of like that. Now take your tag end and wrap it around the standing line. I'm only going to make four turns with this thick mono. With fluorocarbon I'll make anything between five and seven turns depending on the braking strain. Now poke the tag end back through the overhand knot. Again you want to go through the same side it came out. Lubricate the knot and now you can draw it tight. You might need to use your finger and thumbnails to cinch those wraps down. Once the knot is tight, you can trim off the end. I usually leave a few millimeters for insurance. And here's the non-slip loop tied in fluorocarbon. So I'm taking six inches of leader, make an overhand knot, pull it almost closed, I'm taking the tag end through the eye and then it goes back through the overhand knot from the same side it came out. I'm going to make six or seven turns around the standing line and then thread the end back through the overhand knot the same way that it came out. Add some lubrication, pull everything tight. Again, it helps to use the fingernails just to help seat that knot. Trim away the tag end and that's the completed knot. Now there's really only one other knot that I use and that's for tying on tube flies like this Klauser. I use tube flies a lot. They're great when you want to place a hook point at the back of a long fly without the need for a long unwieldy hook. The leader is threaded through a rigid tube which forms the body of the fly and the hook's inserted into a short flexible connector tube. Typically a short shank octopus style hook is used and I tie it to my leader using a snell knot. Now I'll show you how to tie the snell knot using this big hook and nylon monofilament. Put the leader through the eye of the hook. You'll need to pull through around 6 inches of leader. Now fold the tag end back on itself along the hook shank. Holding that loop and the hook between your thumb and forefinger with your other hand start making wraps around the standing line in the shank. Push each wrap back between your thumb and forefinger as you make it. I'm going to make seven wraps. With fluorocarbon though I'll usually make ten. Now, it's quite hard to do this with cold wet fingers but practice as they say makes perfect. Now change hands and take the tag end and thread it through the loop that you made at the beginning. Now work the knot carefully up to the eye and pull tight. Trim away the tag end. You can leave it a little bit longer since it's going to be covered by the connector tubing. And that's the snell knot. And here's how I organize my leaders. I use these 3 by 4 poly bags that you can get at Michael's or Joann's. They cost about $3 for loads of them. I make labels to go inside because anything you write on the outside of the bag is just going to flake off. Then you don't know what you got inside. The best tool for rolling your leaders is the top of an old aerosol paint can. It's the perfect size. Just track the tip end of the leader against the lid and then wrap 
the leader around it. Leave some of the loop end unwrapped and slide the coiled leader off the lid and then twist that loop end around the remaining coils four or five times and that will just hold everything neatly together. And you'll find that your leader is going to fit neatly inside those bags. So there you have it, inexpensive but very usable leaders that will tackle just about any fish that swims in uh, our Pacific Northwest waters. I hope this video was useful uh, for you new guys and that you enjoyed it. And there's one other thing I'd like to say which is that I think it's important for us to support our local fly shops. So I'm going to suggest that you take the cash you would have spent on uh, half a dozen packets of tapered leaders Go down to your fly shop and buy yourself a new fly line or a nice hen saddle, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, and on that happy thought, I will close out the video. And uh, it only remains for me to wish you all good luck. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.